Zavok is a somewhat intriguing case. He's far from the most interesting villain, but he's often Sega's go-to bad guy for just about every new game nowadays. They want him to be the number one adversary of Sonic, aside from Eggman, but judging from the post I made a little while ago, yeah, he's not that popular. Why is he a recurring bad guy, and why doesn't he work? Not once has he felt like a viable antagonist that I want to see again. He's arguably one of the lamest Sonic villains, and I think I know why. Let's take a gander at him in his debut game, Sonic Lost World. Eggman builds an energy-sucking machine to absorb life from nature on Earth on Sonic's unnamed planet and transfers it to his base in the Lost Hex, which has jack to say about. Look at its page on Sonic News Network. The comics have more to say about it than the game does. Eggman uses a conch to control the fiendish band of Zeddy, the Deadly Six, led by Zavok, against their will to keep Sonic busy as he does his sucking. It's clear that the Zeddy hate his guts. you think they would team up with Sonic since they have a common enemy, especially since Sonic frees them from Eggman's conch. Nah, they hijack Eggman's badniks and shoot at everybody, even Tails, and he didn't do anything. Why does Zavok hate Sonic? The Deadly Six no longer serve Eggman, but Zavok commands them to beat Sonic up while he keeps the Doctor's operation going. Zavok is more or less an extension of Eggman. He continues his plans, he uses his badniks, and he even kidnaps Tails with the intention to roboticize him. That's Eggman's shtick! Being the only representatives of their species, this is the nature of the Zeddy. They're hostile and difficult to work with, although we get this pretty heartwarming moment between him and Zick. It would seem the peaceful days of tending my garden will have to wait. I take care of these matters, the rest of you cannot. Please, Master Zick. This is not something you should trouble yourself with. It's beneath you. Now, don't be concerned. I like these two together. It's a rare example of the found family trope in the Deadly Six. The rest of the members... Hmm, he did give Zaz a pat on the back, and he was fairly nice to Zomom. As for Xena, he goes her into fighting Sonic, and he never talked to Zor one-to-one. -one. Sonic, it's time for... Um, how come he's not blue? <laughs> you incompetent fools! I cannot trust you with the simplest of tasks. What a guy! I love him so! What about his accomplishments? What accomplishments? No matter what he does, it amounts to nothing. He doesn't affect the story or gameplay that much. He took control of the Badniks, but Eggman's the final boss, as if Zavok never rebelled in the first place. He turned Tails into a robot, but you never fight him, and he goes back to normal a few minutes later. The Deadly Six could have stayed as Eggman's henchmen, and the game overall wouldn't have changed. Let's look at the other villains and how they affect the story and stages. Chaos gets all seven Chaos Emeralds and floods Station Square. Super Sonic battles him in the destroyed city. Gerald Robotnik programs the Space Colony Arc to crash into the Earth and alter Shadow's memories, setting the events of the story into motion. Mephilus kills Sonic, becomes the god tier Solaris, destroys time and space, and now the heroes must band together and find the Chaos Emeralds in End of the World, without Sonic. These villains have real impact in their games. They push things to happen. It's happening, Reg! Something's actually happening, Reg! Can't you understand? Zavok's first impression wasn't exactly grand, but that hasn't stopped Sega from putting him in every new installment. Sega really wants us to like him, or in other words, accept him. Zavok's here to stay. We're putting him on mobile games, the Olympics, Smash Brothers, and the epic Sonic Forces, which totally gets the fans. And about forces, if you want to make a team of illusions modeled after Sonic's most famous opponents, you obviously have to include the ultra-cool Zavok. It might as well have been the real Zavok there. He's the only illusion who can talk, and he's indistinguishable from his counterpart. Oh, and something funny about illusion Zavok. He took part in defeating Sonic, which let Eggman conquer the world, so the fake Zavok did more than the real one did. That is sad. Still, he is a fake, and the real Zavok would never in a million years work for Eggman of his own free Why are you for real? In Team Sonic Racing, he and Eggman are partners. Even after enslaving the Deadly Six, Zavok joins Eggman's go-kart team and follows his orders. Because... 
Was Zavok meant to be a bigger threat than Eggman or his top underling? Despite being underwhelming and disappointing, he's constantly oversold and shoved in our faces. Okay, which of these villains do you prefer? Wayne SDR HD, stupid looking meth looks the dark, or super awesome Zavok? His character is thin and misdirected. His motivation doesn't go beyond, do bad things, cause I'm bad. There's another problem with him. You've seen the thumbnail, but I'm gonna lead into it anyway. Lost World was always set to be the Sonic game for Mario fans primarily. This has been a trend in the franchise for too long. Instead of letting their own formula evolve, Sonic Team keeps getting distracted by emulating every other successful game. While I do enjoy the parkour gameplay of Lost World, in the HD versions, not the 3DS version, kill the 3DS version with the fire's power, there is a bad itch with this title's main goal. Sonic was never meant to be Sega's Mario, he was Sega's answer to Mario. He challenged Mr. Video Game. And about his attitude. Smarty pants! Can't it be more like that nice boy, Mario? Oh, yeah. Little brat! These franchises are different. Mario games, focusing on the main series here, are jovial, harmless, and have the most basic form of storytelling. Rescue Princess Blank from Scary Bad Guy. Sonic games don't do basic Mario stuff. The stories go for high-spirited youthful innocence versus power-hungry weakness of the human heart. There's a rich lore in this world. Each region has a history. Sonic Colors planted the copy Mario seeds with the Connect the Dots world map, Mandatory Wisps, and a story so short and simple, it could make heroes and unleash gas. Lost World took that and went to the moon with its setting, music, and villains. I brought this up in my collab with Rubia Blue. By by the way, check his channel out. He made some masterful videos on the adventure games. You won't be disappointed. Anyway, Zavok is a clone of Bowser. Look at his design. He's bulky, has the spiky Chun-Li bracelets, two horns, colorful hair with matching eyebrows, and a tail. He leads a gang of baddies that each act as boss fights for one world, and his final battle flat out copied New Super Mario Bros. Wii. After beating him, Rita Repulsa throws her wand down to make him grow ten times his size, and he chases you. Not to mention the area surrounding by lava. This is why Zavok is a recurring villain, because his number one priority is to be Sonic's Bowser. Bowser's in every game, and so must he. Why have villains with creative design, layers, and engaging backstories when you can have stock villains who play it safe? Now Sonic is following the footsteps of that nice boy Mario, contradicting what the marketing was going for since 1991. It's like how the later Ratchet and Clank games abandoned the satire on commercialism and cliches for conventional storytelling that they used to make fun of. No previous adventure could have prepared Quark for his encounter with the dread pirate Blackstar and his crew of... Oh, please tell me this is a typo. That's robotic pirate ghosts. Guess reading wasn't your subject, eh, Professor? I mean, I've worked on some real junk, but this one takes the cake. Pirate ghost robots. I mean, what do they think, we're idiots? Why don't you stand right there, mate? I'll check for booby traps. Booby traps? Isn't that a bit cliché? <laughs> Not at all, mate. <laughs> After all, you're the boob, and here's the trap! I'll forever find Miss Ultimate Army. There's taking notes from other franchises, and then there's having low esteem in your own project. I know Zavok has a following, but most of us don't want him. He doesn't fit as a Sonic villain. He can work as a Knight's villain with a colorful Nightmare Demon motive, but as a Sonic villain, you need to do better. What is unique about Zavok? He has no dimensions, no grand scheme outside of Mwahaha! Let's grow stronger and destroy the world! And no moment that cemented him as a big deal. You know what else? Bowser has way more personality. There's this fun showboaty quality to him. Look at the World 8 map in Super Mario 3D World. You've got carnival lights, a big Bowser sign, and funky music playing. Zavok's landscape is just standard volcano level, cause Bowser did it. And did the RPG installments, he's such a joy to watch. Emulating someone else begs the question, what's special about you? Sonic should never be like Mario. He doesn't need a Bowser. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and feel free to comment what you think about Zavok. Till next time!